my favourite saying is, well, I guess when you can measure. And so I'm a big fan of chemistry and getting the actual um, ratios right of the proportion of minerals. I think that makes it a lot more easier for everything to work in the soil because there's four nutrients, cations that make up pH, calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium and how they all interact with each other. Oh, gee, that's really beautiful. Using these instruments is just a guide. The most popular one I use is probably the refractometer and the nitrate meter. It tells me where my nitrogen is, whether the crop's actually lacking, because by the time you see it visually, it's a bit too late. So that gives you a guide and the refractometer is the tool that tells you in the end result what's happening. Oh, 24. So you're looking at a high bricks level, which corresponds to high sugar levels, which tells you you've got more minerals. I've got a bit of a, a bent towards using the instrument to give me some more guidance and clarity on what direction I'm going, where the crop is at, what I need to do to address the crop to go forward. Down by the edge of the uh, salt lake, the soil is going to be high in salt as a sodium source. So over the years I've been addressing it with calcium, even though it's a high pH, chasing some soluble calcium to actually displace the high potassium, magnesium and sodium. So we've got a bit of a um, demonstration going on here. So we've been putting applications of lime on here and across the other side of the bank over there, I've left that as a control. I haven't put anything on, and just visually you can see the difference now. So we're doing some soil tests to see what's going to show up and obviously the yield monitor on the header will also tell the difference, but I reckon this is going to be way in front. Calcium is like a silent messenger and how important it is. It's not talked about much amongst conventional agriculture, but I suppose it's akin to a family unit. The father is the worker, so that's phosphate. For the mother, she's the one that does all the work behind the scenes, so that's calcium. I don't see calcium as a miracle cure, but it plays a big part in the, the pivotal element in making everything work. You know, you can put calcium on, but you still got to have biology to make it available. I've been told that there's the equivalent in weight of one cow per acre of um, biology, microbes, livestock, whatever you want to call it, underground livestock, yeah. They're the, um, the workhorse in the soil that's actually working for you, so you've got to feed them so that they produce nutrition for the crop to grow. In this case here, it's, it's had 30 litres of UAN at seeding time with a liquid carbon and trace elements. And then we put 28 kilos of dissolved urea on as a foliar with some other biologicals. Fulvic, fish and kelp, and I think amino acids. The soil's easier to work. It's freer draining. Um, there's less weeds of certain types, and there's more resilience in the crop. This paddock has come a long way to what it used to be. I believe I've still got more work to do on it, but it's a pretty good result. Sarah, let's go and look at our cathedral, shall we? That in the multi-species crop here. Armed with a shovel. The seven way multi-species, so there's seven kilos of wheat, seven kilos of barley, and seven kilos of cereal rye, or rye corn. And this is put in with a disc seeder, so this would have had peas, some vetch, lupins, and a bit of canola, totaling all about 80 kilos. But I've only been doing it for this is the second year now, um, and even in that short amount of time, I've noticed how plants, especially cereals, they can grow without any nitrogen because the legumes are mixed with it. And um, the actual uh, amount of uh, growth and biomass they produce and how the soil is actually um, more softened up. Top five inches is pretty well flocculated. But how the soil just all crumbles. Yeah, it's beautiful. Falls apart. It's had no foliars. The base nutrition is just a liquid, carbons and trace elements and then MOP with some guano in it. It's the base nutrition because I believe in still continually um, feeding the plant. A few years ago, um, this whole soil profile here was just riddled with earthworm castings, which 
which is pretty um, extraordinary really. This was doing three to four tonne here last year. It was actually sown without fertiliser. I wouldn't do that as a continual practice because we put it in, we didn't know what we were going to do with it. Whether we are going to plough it in, hay it off or anyway, we ended up harvesting it for a cash crop for dairy. So we thought we'd do the same again because I believe that if you've got enough plants in the system with a legume, we should be able to just continually keep doing the same thing. So now because I've balanced the soil with the chemistry and feeding the biology into it, I'm, I'm getting the results showing here on this crop here. Another important point about getting the chemistry right is that if you get the top A horizon, the four to five inches in balance, well, that makes it a lot easier for the plant to grow in that environment. Underneath that A horizon is a huge smorgasbord of nutrients and we just have to get them in a state whereby they're more available to the plant. So you're farming deeper instead of going wider. I sit on the tailgate of the ute and I can look out here and I think, wow, it's just a good feeling to actually see the crop and I'll be looking forward to getting into harvest. Enjoy the fruits of my labours.